Hello and welcome to the Photoshop podcast. My name is Terry White and today we're going to take a look at the brand new Photoshop Express for iPhone and iPad. So I'm on an iPhone 4. I'm just going to go ahead and launch the app and one of the first things you'll notice that's new is the brand new Adobe tab. The Adobe tab will show you some sample photos and, and these are actually taken with an iPhone and give you some creative ideas on how you might want to use this app. So we'll just go ahead and tap the edit icon and what we're going to do here is we have the ability of course since this is an iPhone Phone, we can take a photo directly with the iPhone camera directly inside the app. However, even if you were on an iPod Touch, you have the ability to select the photo that was already taken or on your um, on your um, albums and use those photos directly inside of the application. So I have a photo here. I'm just going to go ahead and tap on it, and that photo will launch. And I have the ability to. Um, start working with that photo but actually that's a landscape photo which we can do in landscape it will work that way but there's a portrait version of that photo that I would rather use so let's go ahead and select photo again go back to the camera roll and we'll choose I believe it's the first one here there we go so now we've got the portrait version of that photo and the first thing I'd like to do is crop it so we'll just grab our crop tool and as you can see we can just move the crop rectangle around but I also have the ability to adjust the size of the crop so I can crop off exactly the pieces that I don't want people to be able to see at the bottom of the photo now I'll go ahead and tap OK and that will perform the crop but there's one more thing I forgot to show you so let's go back to crop one more time and one of the things is you tap the lock icon here and it will show you the aspect ratios that you can lock it to so if I wanted to make this a perfect square I can tap one to one and that will give me the ability to move it as a perfect square if I tap OK that will crop it again so now I've cropped it twice and I really don't want that second crop so we have some nice undo and redo options here I have multiple undos and multiple redos so I can undo the last thing I did or just keep going back now the next thing we'll do is we'll make an adjustment so we'll go to our adjustments where we have exposure saturation tint black and white and contrast we'll adjust the exposure a bit on this photo and the beauty of it is there's no tools or interface that comes up it's your finger so if you want to make the adjustment you want to make it brighter drag to the right you want to make it darker drag to the left and that will adjust the exposure of your image to your liking now we'll just go ahead and tap OK on that and we can again continue working. I'm going to choose saturation. Well, I'm just going to make the photo a little bit more saturated here. There we go. And we'll tap OK. And we also can go over here where we have some more effects. We have sketch, soft focus, and sharpen. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen the image up just a bit. And that will make it nice and sharp. Actually, you know what? I don't want that one that sharp so we'll just cancel it so even if you choose something and you see it and you don't like it you can cancel out of it before you apply it next we'll head over to effects and borders I know there's an effect that I want to use it's actually called vibrant it's the first one just makes the photo much more vibrant makes it pop and but we have some other ones here like pop <laughs> we have vignette blur we have warm vintage we have rainbow we have white glow if you slide over you also can see soft black and white but I'm gonna go back over to vibrant that's the one I really like here for this particular photo we'll tap OK and last but not least we'll do borders so I'm gonna choose a soft edge border that's one of my favorites and we'll tap OK and now I have the option of save and exit which, just, which will just save it back to the camera roll saving a copy in other words my original will still be there save and upload will save it and upload it directly to photoshop.com and save and post to Facebook or TwitPic the two of the most popular social networking uh, sites on the planet so you can use one application to take your photos make simple adjustments to your photos and upload and share them to your favorite sites now before we do that here we'll just um, save and exit because we can always upload it later maybe you're working on a plane you don't have the ability to upload right then and there and once it's saved uh, to the camera roll and again it's saving the full resolution so it's going to take a second or two to do that we have the ability also to go online so online is showing me all the photos on my free account at 
photoshop.com and all my albums. And the beauty here is that I can see photos, even photos that I didn't necessarily take with my iPhone. I, maybe I took these with, with my professional DSLR. And I have the ability also to share a photo even though I didn't take the photo just now, even though the photo's not on my device right now, I can say, you know what, hey, I want to share that photo I took two weeks ago with a friend of mine, and it's on Photoshop.com, I don't even have it on my phone anymore, I can email it directly from Photoshop.com to that person. So, pretty cool to be able to not only see your photos and take them and view them, even though they're not with you on your device, but also the ability to share them as well. So, that's just a quick look at Photoshop.com for iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. It's a free download from the App Store. Hope you enjoy it.